Joining me now is Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, thanks so much for coming on the U.S. Report tonight. Want to get your general feeling about the uh, convention this week here. It seems to me that this has been the ultimate tri triumph of vibe over policy. What do you think? Yeah. All foam and no beer, as we like to say <laughs> here in the United States here, right? Uh, all hat, no cattle, all sizzle, no steak. I have not heard a thing, a thing about foreign policy. When we have wars going on in Gaza, obviously Ukraine, Russia, China, aggressive towards Taiwan at this point, kind of a big deal, right? But then when you talk about the biggest issues in this country, as far as what people care about most based on polling, inflation, wages, economy, crime, immigration, border, education, trade, energy, all those things we have not heard a thing about. What we heard a lot about, however, is joy. Joy is a big mm. thing. The word literally, if you look at the transcript, has been said hundreds of times by different speakers throughout this whole thing. Also said throughout this entire DNC, Trump, hundreds of times his name has been mentioned. Meanwhile, the sitting president of the United States has been uttered exactly something like 12 times. Joe Biden <laughs> has barely been mentioned at this point. So it's all about fluff. It's all about platitudes. There's nothing about policy. And I get that conventions are supposed to be about themes, but the United States, we'll put it this way. According to Gallup, 73% of Americans think the country is going in the wrong direction. The two mm. biggest issues are economy and illegal immigration. And yet we barely hear a thing about this it's all about Coach Walls, and it's all about Kamala Harris, the greatest candidate ever who everybody didn't like literally eight <laughs> weeks ago. That's where we're at at this point. And it's about, you know, our democracy, which means a candidate that no one ever got a chance to vote for. But, you know, you mentioned the right. word joy, but there was another word here that's really struck me. We keep hearing, and it's pretty ironic, they keep talking about uh, freedom and this rebranding of freedom. Have a little listen to Tim Walls here. We also protected reproductive freedom because in Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and the personal choices they make. And even if we wouldn't make those same choices for ourselves, we've got a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. I mean, Joe, the idea of the Democrats saying, mind your own business, this is the party of meddling in your life. It's like they're like, you know, oh, love who you want to love, but don't cook that person a meal on a gas stove or pick them up for a date in a V8 car. This rebranding of freedom, it seems very sinister to me. Oh, my goodness. I, I just threw up my mouth a little bit. I, I got to admit, because <laughs> Coach, Coach Walls, right, and I played football, the other football here in the United States as far as, you know, uh, Patrick Mahomes, traffic, Kelsey kind of football. Uh, he talks about mind your own damn business. In Minnesota, literally, this governor, when COVID hit, created a, a snitch hotline where if you saw somebody wearing a mask where they or not wearing a mask where they should, then you call the hotline, report on your neighbor, and tell on them. This is the same guy who drove 96 miles an hour, drunk driving and got his coaching license revoked here in, in the U.S. and had to volunteer coach instead as an assistant coach and then rode those coattails to a state championship, apparently. Uh, and now we're always oh, Coach Walls. He's a man of the people. I, I cannot get over the gaslighting that's going on here. And Democrats are smart in this sense. They know they can get away with it because our stupid, corrupt, utterly hopeless media here in the U.S. allows them to get away with it where the fact checkers apparently have been on spring break for the last three and a half years so they could say all these things and not worry about any consequences because, well, the media is going to be like, yeah, yay, Tim Walls, yay, come on. Yay. It's all a big joke. Well, it is, man, you know, but let's talk a little bit more about Tim Walls for a moment because he makes also, you know, you said about being a coach, but he also makes this huge deal about having been a teacher, right? But then he said this. I thought this was really curious during his speech. I had 24 kids in my high school class, and none of them went to Yale. Now, look, I mean, you know, 
I thought if you were a teacher, you'd be proud if your kids went to Yale. I know he wants to slam J.D. Vance, but this seems to use another word they like to use, weird. And when you take it in the context, Joe, of a whole convention where people like Michelle Obama, who owns four mansions, criticizes other people getting rich, <laughs> right. it's, it seems like the Democrat elite, the theme here is everybody else stay in your place, and hey, that's freedom. Your thoughts on this? I'll, I'll make this personal, okay? My dad, uh, who I just spoke to a couple of minutes ago, actually, 81 years old, right? This guy grew up poor. All right, his dad died at a relatively young age. Uh, my grandmother, my, my, my Nana Concha, uh, actually went to go work at a hospital where she wasn't a nurse, she wasn't a doctor, she dropped out of school basically in fourth grade because she, she had to support her family. Uh, she worked there uh, in, in a kind of a grunt kind of job, serving people and just making sure that they were feeling and doing okay. Never got a driver's license, by the way. Literally like walked up, took the bus and went to Hackensack High, uh, Hospital here in New Jersey. When, when I hear this sort of thing from Tim Walls, talking about how J.D. Vance is a bad guy because he grew up poor and got himself out of poverty, out of a bad home where his mother obviously was abused, all these things, and then he was able to pull himself up and then he joins the Marines after high school. He graduates Ohio State University in two years. And here in the US, it takes four, or in my case, four and a half, trust me. And then he gets <laughs> to Yale Law School, it's a true story, uh, Yale Law School, and is on the Yale Review and accomplishes all these things, becomes a senator eventually, every American, every Englishman, every every Australian, I don't care who you are, should celebrate that and say, that's great. You, you, you worked through all this adversity and you eventually got to a place where now you could be the next vice president or even president of the United States. Instead, Tim Walls, a teacher of all people, should be commending that like, wow, that's great. You did exactly what I tried to teach you to do and he's criticizing him over it. It's so phony. It's so fake. This guy, Kamala Harris, the whole party, quite frankly, I think this has a boomerang effect, quite frankly, where Look, this convention usually should result in a poll bounce. I think not the reverse, but I don't think they get anything out of this because it's so fake and so inauthentic. I'm sorry. No, look, I think you're right. And, you know, I think with Kamala Harris, kind of what you see is what you get. I think Tim Waltz is the more sinister one because I think that's the guy who's really trying to be something he's not. Joe Concha, thank you so much for your time here on the U.S. Report.